So we're going to talk about module two, single area OSPF, actual configuration. We're specifically going to talk today. I guess you could be watching all these videos in one day or multiple days. Uh, so we're going to talk about OSPF router IDs, which is 2.1. And then um, after that, in the configuration section, we're going to talk about point to point OSPF networks 2.2, multi access, which is Ethernet usually 2.3 we're going to talk about um, single area ospf modifying that configuration 2.4 and we're going to talk about default route propagation in 2.5 super important if you don't remember what that is that's that zero route usually tells us how to get to the internet or if we just don't know where it is and then we're also going to verify we're going to do a bunch of show commands here in 2.6 so moving forward with OSBF router IDs. All routers will have, um, in this reference topology, will have configured interfaces. So we already configured, you should know how to put an IP address, activate an interface, all that good stuff. No static or dynamic routing yet until we start doing these examples. And then all interfaces are in OSBF area zero, also known as the backbone area, except for this one here, which goes to the World Wide Web or internet um, and that's it so we're going to enable OSPF v2 with this command right here we're allowed to have a process ID between 1 and 65,535 and if you don't remember that number then you'll fail the class I'm just joking um, it's a really big number uh, really what that is is I think that's 32 bits I could do the math. If I would do the math live, it's more exciting that way. So if I take two to the power of, is that, that I need to change it to a scientific calculator, don't I? Scientific two to the power of 32. No, that's wrong. Sixteen. See, this is why I fact check myself here. Um, so you'll see that the the actual values are sixty five, five thirty six, but you know um, we're one off. Not exactly. So for some reason they don't allow you to use zero. They could have, but that's what they missed out on here. They didn't let you use zero. So. Process ID value is locally significant. It doesn't matter to any other router, but the router it's configured on. And it's usually best practice to use all the same, unless you need multiple, um, which you can run multiple processes for OSPF. Most organizations are not gonna need that though. So just keep that in mind. So this is what it looks like in configuration mode, right? We'll do our enable, we'll do our configure terminal or conf T, and then we'll go here and type router OSPF with our process ID. And this example is 10. A lot of people use one, it's, it's easy. Um, and then we can do a question mark to see what available commands are there. So all these commands we have available. The one we're looking for is this router ID command to specify our router ID. So our router ID, again, is a 32-bit value. It looks like an IP address, but it's not an IP address. Um, necessarily it's used to uniquely identify an OSPF router very important it has to be unique 100% so we require it to participate in OSPF if we don't manually assign it uh, it can be defined by an administrator or automatically assigned so if we don't manually assign it, it's going to be automatically assigned by the router so we have two purposes here we're going to um, make that a unique identifier for synchronizing databases and we are going to use that in the election of the dr as a tiebreaker if our priorities are the same remember layer three technology so our priority is going to be higher which is better lower is worse layer two protocols by contrast are the opposite their uh, higher numbers are going to be worse lower numbers are going to be better for layer two technologies 
So this infographic is wrong, but I'm going to use it anyway. So if a router ID is explicitly configured, yes, then it's explicitly configured, and you're good. You explicitly configured it, so it's explicitly configured, and you use that one. Um, that That's wrong. Uh, if it's not explicitly configured, then you look for a loopback. So if there's a loopback, you use the highest loopback. If there's not, then you use the highest active IPv4 address. Super, super important. I can probably tell you that there was probably a test question that will probably have to do with OSBF picking the router ID. And there's going to be two interfaces, one that has a higher IP, but is not active and you're going to have to remember this so write that down it's a very very important detail right there it has to be an active interface it has to be enabled it has to be online it has to be um, whatever you want to call it can't think of the word it has to have negotiated layer 2 connectivity and obviously layer 3 connectivity it has to have an IPv4 address um, IPv6 addresses don't matter in this case so the router ID can be assigned to a loopback interface this provides more control than using a physical interface however it may cause routing issues so if you do some weird stuff it may cause routing issues to type a loopback uh, should typically be configured using a 32-bit subnet mask, all 255s. Just about any loopback should be configured that way. This effectively creates what's called a host route. So that means there's only a route to that one specific IP address and nothing else. Not an entire network of 2, 4, 24, 128 IP addresses, just the single one. So we would not advertise that route. OSPF does not need to be enabled on an interface for that interface to be chosen as the router ID. Important to remember. So oh, you don't have to enable OSPF on that interface to, for it to be picked as a router ID. You don't have to activate it on the interface. It will just pick an active interface. Loopbacks are preferred and then physical interfaces that are active. So in this case, they're configuring a loopback with the IP address of all ones and that's your all 255 subnet mask. We're gonna end that, and then you'll show IP protocols, include router ID, and you'll see it there. Um, it's a very specific command. You can verify the router ID, show IP protocols. Um, it looks like they have a few examples of the ex same exact one. Um, I wish they'd put the whole command, but they, they limited it to include router ID. So we can also explicitly configure it. So if we go into router OSPF 10, we can specify that command we saw earlier, router ID, and then put in whatever ID we want. Again, it looks like an IPv4 address, but it's not. Of course, don't forget to end out of your um, configuration, con configuring router mode, whatever you want to call it, and get back into your regular config mode. Or actually, it looks like they, they ended, so it went back to privileged exact mode. So, after you select a router ID, an active OSPF router does not allow the ID to be changed until the router is reloaded or the OSPF process is reset. So, you can use this command. Be very cautious with this command in the real world because this will reset your OSPF. Guess what? All your OSPF routes will disappear. You'll pretty much lose connectivity to a bunch of stuff temporarily. Um, probably better than rebooting the entire router, but you may want to wait till off hours to do something like this. Just a, a word of warning here. So it looks like they're doing router ID manually here and they say, oh, you already have one, so you can use this command to reload the process. And here they're resetting the process and now we're gonna have to redo all of our adjacencies. Go through that whole process we just talked about, about you know, your init state, um, going through your X start, DR, BDR election, all that kind of stuff, um, if we need it. 
So again, we can do that and verify here. Same kind of thing. 